welcome back to my channel I'm Deanna and you're watching Orchid D. Today uh, we are going to do a video going through my grow spaces and picking out my orchids that aren't doing so well and that are either just due or way overdue for a repot so I have a confession to make to you guys but I have been super slack with my repottings so it's spring here now and a lot of these orchids have been overdue for a repot and I just haven't done it so as you guys might know I was a bit unwell about a month six weeks ago and so even my watering all that stuff fell behind but now I'm recovering very well I'm back on track with the watering I've reshuffled a lot of my orchids so they're in good growing spaces at the moment however my repotting has really fallen back so next week is a dedicated orchid week where I am going to get things back on track get my orchids back in I don't know a good state so spring is a really good time for repotting. I've got lots of new growth starting. I've got lots of root growth happening. Now it's been warm for quite a couple of months now so I probably should have done this a lot sooner. And the other thing is there are orchids in my collection which I know need to be repot like ASAP and if I leave it much longer they're not going to do well. The other thing is with spring comes pests and pests are probably half the reason that the orchids that aren't doing so well are in the state they're in currently so we need to take a closer look at them. The very last point I want to make just before I show you all these guys is that I have been a little bit ruthless over the last maybe six months with orchids that aren't doing great and I think aren't going to improve much more so there were some dendrobium seedlings which had you know been attacked by spider mites last year I was sort of recovering them I found more spider mites on them and I just decided to chuck them so I have just come to the conclusion that I don't want to rescue a lot of orchids I want healthy plants in my collection and so I've been a lot more ruthless in terms of not trying to rescue and save as many but to get rid of the ones that are really struggling uh, so that I don't end up with spreading of infection or spreading of pests throughout my whole collection. So yeah I just want to keep it quite real with you guys. I have successful plants but I also have unsuccessful plants and I live in a very warm climate. I struggle with pests a lot like all the time you know and I have my treatment strategies for them. Sometimes my treatments don't work and I lose the battle to pests or infections just like everybody else so it's not always good things here like I I still have my troubles with orchids as well so today we are going to look at the bad ones in my collection or at least the ones that I'm trying to prevent from declining too much so basically we're going to go through my collection and I'm going to pull aside the orchids which I don't think are doing as well as they should be or are due for a repot and I'll tell you why um, I'm pulling them aside as I do it. But before we get into the depressing stuff let me show you some nice things that are happening on this shelf because there are still some positive things it's not going to be a completely depressing video this is my dendrobium little green apples and she is looking absolutely splendid look how big this plant is getting i got her when she was about half that size but these flowers are so long lasting and so pretty i actually think that i want to do a video on the latoria type dendrobiums next week as well because I've got another one in bud at the moment. I just want to talk about them because I think they're very underrated and I don't think there's a lot of information about Latorias out there. The other thing I wanted to show you was this very very cool spike that's developing on one of my Oncidiums. Oncidium Space Race Chanel and I grew this from one bulb so I'm very impressed with this spike. It's looking absolutely fabulous. A couple of other spikes developing on my Catacetum tenebrosum and a couple of beautiful spikes developing here and of course one there that I broke. The only two on this shelf that really need looking at are these two. This one, there's nothing wrong with her. This is Chloe's here, Grace Dunn, but she needs repotting because she is starting to work on her new growths for the season. The other one I have over here is Dendrobium Blue Twist and I would have gotten up a year before this uh, so back in 2017 and it's just never done that well for me. Firstly yes it is completely overpotted. I've made mistakes with it from the beginning but 
I don't know if I really want to keep it. Um, it's never really progressed and you can see that something has kind of attacked it like it's quite unhappy. I'm not sure I've never actually seen active pests on it. To be honest it's kind of plants like this that I don't really want to keep anymore. Over on this shelf there's quite a few that need repotting. This Gongora it's growing very well. It's one that I keep constantly moist um, and I know it's in a medium from the beginning of last year that wasn't the best so it could probably use a nice refreshing of media. This is my twinkle. I'm still deciding it's probably in a medium that dries a bit too quickly for it. It's an extremely thirsty plant. I constantly get this leaf tip die back so I wonder if I should just put it in some straight sphagnum moss. I'm still thinking about it. These oncidiums are not doing well so if you remember I knocked over a plant from up here previously and it had snails so I am concerned that snails are an issue. This is Oncidium alisuca clare and it's actually rotted off two of its back bulbs very recently actually. It was doing okay and then all of a sudden it's just gone downhill. It does have this new growth which is growing well but it needs to come out of the pot. This one, oh my gosh I've lost the tag for it. I'm so sorry I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. It grew these two new bulbs. Um, last season and it's working on two more. This side seems fine and it seems to be progressing quite nicely but this side so I've noticed some pests and I've cleaned out in between that little sheath in there and in between these sheets I have sprayed it recently I'm not sure if you can see but I have found some bits of scale and stuff through there so I just think it needs to come out of the pot have a good repot um, get some fresh medium and start the season fresh this is Bolara Diana Dunn um, has been going downhill for months and months and months so it was doing well before I left for overseas for my honeymoon and since I came back it's been doing terribly it constantly that back bulbs just completely shriveled up and it constantly gets like little bits of scale on it for months now it hasn't done very much and it's definitely not doing well at all let's just get these ones downstairs ASAP get them out of the pots and see what's going on so on this shelf here, there's a whole bunch that I'm going to point out. The top shelf is fine. I've got some Bulbophyllums and Dendrobiums. Everything's growing well up there. This is the Oncidium with snails that I will put a link up to, but it is growing a new growth down there. So I think it's fine. I can see some roots growing down into the medium. It looks terrible and shriveled, but I think it's actually going to be okay. And there's another Oncidium here, which came to me with snails. And if you remember, this is the one that I let bloom and I might've left the blooms on a little bit too long because it shriveled up quite badly, but I have noticed that it's bringing out a new growth down there can you see that and I also have noticed some roots progressing down there so that is a very good sign so this next shelf down is my trouble shelf for those of you who have followed my channel for quite a while you'll know that I generally do quite well with my Mordier Paphia petalums but they have been going downhill a little bit um, and I'm very sad about it so they have been due for a repot for a while um, I have noticed this happening for a while and I have just been super slack so next week I am going to take you guys along for a mottled leaf paffy petalum repot because I'm going to do them all. Some of them are still doing fine, but some of them are not doing fine at all. So this one, for example, can you see how loose that is? It's actually not even attached to that second growth anymore, I don't think. And that means that it's losing roots. So there could be a number of factors that are affecting that. Firstly, they have been in their pots for about 18 months. So I know at the beginning of last year, I wasn't like completely happy with the media I was using. So it's probably starting to break down a bit as well. It's starting to get a bit too acidic for these guys so it's still growing but that is just unstable the other thing is I mean as time goes along you do lose a little bit of the top layer of your medium so as you water you lose medium also it becomes a bit more compact the level that your plant is sitting at could be higher than when you potted it the paphia petalums can lose their oldest leaves so as they lose their bottom leaves and they start to sit higher in the pot the root tips that come out might be coming out a little bit too high like above the medium and because these guys are semi-terrestrial um, they're not given an opportunity to start within the medium i've had to top up the medium a couple of times this one too, this is um, two Mortiers in the same pot, but 
I had to top up their medium because they were just sitting a bit too high. I am going to separate those two as well. This one's the same. It's not doing as well as it was. It was doing excellently previously and it's not doing so well and same with this one. This is my green Mortier and it was previously doing excellently, not so much anymore. This one back here is doing fine but it's in a very small pot for the size of the plant so I am going to put it in a bigger pot. So yeah that is going to be a big job repotting these Mortier types and I'm a bit disappointed in myself like I've known that they haven't been doing as well as they had previously been for quite a few weeks now so they should have come out of their pots weeks ago and repotted but uh, I left them so learn from my mistakes you know there are plants that I'm going to show you that I know are just starting to decline and that is the proper time to repot them you start to get to know your plants really well and you start to know when they're not as vigorous and not doing as well and that is the opportune time so I hope I haven't left it too late but we will find out when I repot them up on my balcony grow space I just recently set this up and if you want to watch a video of that update I will put a link up now but most of these are up here because they're relatively healthy so most of them the only reason they need repotting is because they're outgrowing their pots like some of these oncidiums are getting to that quite root bound stage especially my shari baby and stuff they're sort of encroaching the edge of the pot so they will need repotting at some stage but not now now I'm just going to focus on the ones that really need repotting. We'll have a quick look. The species fowl is doing fine. The only one that I'm thinking of repotting is this cornu survey. It is only just starting to bring out its new buds for the season though. You can see them developing. When I went on my honeymoon it dried up all its like roots and stuff and I just feel like it could be doing better. And the rest of the species fowls are doing very well like I said these guys are doing amazing they probably just need repotting because they're so big in their pots but I think I also need to buy some bigger pots for them as well if I'm gonna do that over here these guys are fine this is probably the oncidium that I want to show you guys so it looks really healthy um, on just sight alone I probably wouldn't play with it it's developing this growth and it's just gonna start to plump up now I can feel it I reckon it's just about flowering size now so it should flower off this growth but I'm not sure if I can show you guys effectively but it's having a look at its roots and can you see how poorly developed they are you can see that one's just stopped in its tracks that one's cut off they don't look healthy so I'm concerned I'm concerned and this one definitely needs to come out of the pot um, it's probably going to interrupt if it was thinking about flowering I may interrupt that cycle and it may not flower but I think it's more important to get this one out of the pot and have a look at the roots and make sure that there's no nasty pests in there Ooh, I have to show you guys I just noticed maxillary tenophilia is just starting to open up I just noticed there's one little bud on it the other day and I'm so excited it would have just opened up because it was closed yesterday that's very exciting anyway um, the dendrobiums up here so this is the dendrobium spectabili and a couple of the phalaenopsis types they're probably due for a repot their root masses are quite nice in there I might wait though they're all doing very healthy so I might just wait until they start bringing out a new growth and once that new growth is a certain length that's when I'm going to choose to repot them so I won't repot them straight away the last one which probably needs a repot actually is my Cyclopsis but it's just finishing developing this growth and I really want to see if it flowers and this is another one that's kept evenly moist it's in my older media so it could definitely use a repot and it is actually a really good time to repot this one because I'm not sure if you can see but it is developing its new root system from this new pseudo bulb so yes I should probably repot it it's on my to-do list this is the foul grow space and things are generally doing okay here there's a couple that just need repotting that I've been saying I'm going to repot because it's still in the original sphagnum that it came in this one as well oh here's what I mean by pests right like the fowls struggle with mealybugs I'm sure I can find someone here 
Can you see the mealybugs in there? So I might actually dedicate a video next week to some of these orchids that have some pests on them and how I'm going to start treating them and what my regime is normally in spring in terms of pest control. There's a couple that are struggling on this side. This one I think is on its way to recovery though. You can see these beautiful roots developing. I just need to make sure, oh yep, there's one growing into the medium there. Um, otherwise I would have to try and redirect these ones a little bit so they would at least go into the medium so it gets some hydration. This one though I think I need to do something about so um, I got these in the middle of the year. This is Fal Bastianii and it didn't have a good root system. It just had a couple of very short roots and unfortunately I've never been able to get it to secure itself in the media. You can see it's not it's not even in that media so I might have to take it out. I tried to put some sphagnum on top to keep the couple of roots it has moist. Oh there is a root tip there. What I might do is actually put this whole plant in a little cup or something with without holes in the bottom and just put some sphagnum in just to keep a little bit of humidity around that root area so it starts to develop some new root tips um, because this is really difficult to keep moist and I think that's what it needs it just needs a bit more humidity because it's trying to bring out some new roots so I wouldn't want that to dry up or anything. Now things aren't doing too badly on my back deck here but the zygopetalums back here could definitely use a repot. They are in some pretty funky media that I got from Bunnings like a couple of years ago. Um, they didn't seem to mind it, but definitely that stuff would be starting to break down now. The other thing is I've never been able to get these guys to flower. So I think maybe freshening up the media might do it some good. The others that probably could do with a repotting are some of the paths. They're actually doing really well though. This is the Michael Cooperwitz and you can see that the level's getting a bit lower than I'd like there. Same with the one back here, Hung Sheng Eagle. You can see that it's just sitting a bit higher from the medium than is ideal and I think they could probably go up a pot size as well. So I've got some examples. This is a Paf Angel hair, which you can see I've put some sphagnum just to raise the level of the media a little bit. I think I've got this Paf Lowei here as well. Put some sphagnum there, um, just so if they are creating new root tips higher up, they're not dying back. And it might also be like existing roots that they become a bit exposed. And then if the base of an existing root dehydrates and dies off, then the rest of that root will die off as well. Just before I wrap things up, so I just caught a glimpse of this out of the corner of my eye. Look at this! So this is my Sologeny Burfordiens, which I got in my last orchid haul. What a jerk! <laughs> I thought I potted this one up so beautifully. Look, it is, oh, it's chucking out two new growths from that growth there. That's so annoying. Hmm, so this might be another one to, well, not repot as such. It would just need some readjustment. Anyway, I just had to show you guys how annoying orchids can be. Not that I'm not grateful for new growths, but seriously, could it not have just chucked one out like on that side? All right, everyone. Well, I have moved um, most of the plants from upstairs that need repotting down here and they're just sitting there. So it's going to be a big weekend. Just ignore the two big plants there. They're just there because they're there. I just noticed something. This is my cat layer zip which everyone says is way bigger than a cat layer zip should be, so it might not be, but it looks like we're gonna soon find out. Can you guys see the shadow back there? And this sheath as well, woohoo! And I think this might be one of the newer sheaths as well. I'm not sure why it's dried up, but I can definitely feel a swelling in there. So we're gonna have some flowers on my big fat query cat layer zip as well. All right, everyone, it's the next morning and I thought I'd just round off this video by doing a really quick update on the first batch of orchids that I've repot. This is the first one. It has no tag, so I can't remember the name of it. And something very, very annoying has happened. I use an app called Orchid Sense to track my orchids and, you know, I take regular pictures with them. I store a lot of my information on them and I updated my iPhone overnight to the new iOS and my app is not compatible with the new iOS. It won't even open and I'm very annoyed. So this app never ever seen an update for it. So I'm not sure if this issue is going to get resolved. So it's particularly annoying. I think though that all aside, this is 
maybe on Cidium Tiger Crow. Anyway, there was a bit of scale on this orchid, so it was put in a little bit of a bleach and fungicide solution. A lot of the roots on the older bulbs were dead, but it did have new roots coming out of those new growths. So it's also been up potted. So we'll see how that one goes. Um, hopefully it enjoys that a bit better. This is Fowl Bastianii, which I've taken out of um, the pot, which if you can see that there. And I've put it in this um, sphagnum mix. It's actually got a couple of very short new root tips. Um, so hopefully this little setup will help it along a little bit. This is, I guess, one method to try and improve your root growth a little bit. Um, it just keeps humidity around that root zone, but it is similar to like this spag and bag sort of method i guess over here we've got my oncidium twinkle pink profusion and it's now in a self-watering um, system with some sphagnum and perlite i've had these pots for ages actually um, since like the beginning of last year and i just never used them and after i got back from my honeymoon i put my miltoniopsis in them it seems to be really helping me keep up with the watering for these really high moisture level plants and i feel like this twinkle is one of them so hopefully benefits from that this has gone and I greet her. It was just due for a repot along with that Cycopsis. Both had excellent root systems. And just a few more to finish this Cloacea Grace done in its new home for the year. It's actually got four new growths starting up. Yeah, I'm not sure if it'll develop all of them. It actually was two separate plants in that pot. This next one is Prasada Orange Delight Hilo Sunrise. And it's the one with that those new root tips that had been munched off. Uh, it actually had a very good root system in there and I couldn't see any pests. But anyway, no regrets. Hopefully I didn't disturb it too much. Back here we've got got Cornu Servi which is in one pot size smaller actually. It didn't have the most amazing root system so hopefully some fresh medium and those new roots that are coming out now will do better. And the last one is Dendrobium Blue Twist which I said I was probably going to throw away but I didn't see on the other side that it does have this growth growing and the root system was actually pretty good so I'll give it another chance. Alright guys well that is the first batch of repottings done as I said I've got heaps more to go but I hope you got something out of this video um, please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more orchid videos just to let you guys know out of this batch two orchids did get binned one was the Oncidium Alasuka Claire which had that um, fast progressing back bulb rot and there was indeed like some fungal rot going through that rhizome and so I've chucked that one and the other one was the Bellara Diana done which unfortunately just was not savable. The whole plant was just completely shriveled up, no new growths, no viable roots so yeah it's in the bin but hopefully these guys do okay for me and yeah so I hope you guys have a fantastic week and happy growing until I see you next time. Bye!